Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey, on this next video, I wanted to do a uh, a little you know presentation on parallel circuits because I know they can be kind of confusing too. Hopefully, this kind of clarifies a little bit of things for you guys. Um, the biggest thing with any of these circuits or anything with electrical calculations is to just practice and practice and practice. Um, it's not the easiest stuff in the world to understand. Like I said, electrical you can't see. So sometimes understanding how to calculate some of these uh, math these math problems for electrical um, can really help you understand circuit problems um, down the road. Some of you guys are probably thinking, Wartman, am I really gonna do Ohm's law calculations every day in the shop when I'm working as a career as an automotive technician? And I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. No, you're not. Um, I rarely used Ohm's law on a daily basis to solve calculations for circuit problems when I was a technician. But what it does is it helps you better understand electrical circuits and how one value directly relates to another value. That's the purpose of this is understanding that resistance directly relates to amperage and voltage and so on and so on and so on. All right. So it will help you understand it a lot better. All right. So I'm going to pull my uh, share screen up here. I'm going to get this up here on the board. Share the screen. All right, let's see if we can go through this a little bit. See if this makes a little bit more sense broken down to you. Now, in your learning objective, 40-10, um, there is some very good videos in there of working through um, how parallel and series parallel circuits work, all right? Um, remember, in a series circuit, everything is wired in series. Think of your Christmas lights on a Christmas tree. If you pull one bulb out, all of them go out. So if there's a problem anywhere in the circuit, the entire circuit is down, okay? Parallel circuits, if one branch of the parallel circuit is down, for example, right here, if this bulb burns out or is removed, this one will still light up, okay? So that's why parallel circuits are used um, a lot more on automobiles and cars and trucks and equipment, things like that. Series circuits, I'm not saying you won't see any series circuits on a car um, in automotive, you definitely will run into some, but the majority of the circuits are gonna be parallel circuits because if one headlight bulb burns out, we don't want the other one to go out either, okay? Like a Christmas light. So talk, make sure you watch those videos. Those videos are great. Um, they have better animations and stuff than I can do right now on here. So check out those videos of how they work and how they explain it, all right? So a parallel circuit, the biggest thing to remember is it has more than one path for current to flow. So it comes up here, can branch off here and branch off here but back to ground whereas a series circuit has one path if any component or connection fails in one branch the current flows normally through the remaining branches unlike in a series so if the one bulb goes out the other one will still work where in this one if either one of these bulbs goes out it is now made an open circuit and the other one will be directly affected uh, voltage is the same at the input of all branches. So at the input of this branch and the input of this branch, voltage is the same. If it's 12 volts coming out of here, it's going to be 12 volts here and 12 volts here. Voltage drop is the same across the branches. So if there's a 2 volt voltage drop here or an 8 volt voltage drop here, whatever it may be, it's going to be the same at each branch. All right, current flow in parallel um, in a parallel circuit. Total current equals the sum of current flowing in each branch, even when resistances are not equal. As you can see here, these resistances are different. We've got two ohm, a six ohm, and a 12 ohm. But total current equals added up all of the current flowing in each branch. So if you look here, we have nine amps of current going in. We have one amp coming out after this resistance, two amps after this resistance, and six amps after this resistance, all right? The 12 ohm resistor used more amperage. It slowed the current down. The six ohm resistor is a little bit less. The two ohm is less resistance, so more amperage can flow through. But when they join back up and come back to the power source or to ground, it's nine amps again. So remember that total current equals the sum of current flowing in each branch added up. All right, so we got six, seven, eight, nine. They're all added back up to nine. Current flow adds up in a parallel circuit. It's the biggest thing to remember now. Parallel circuit resistance, here's a good example. 
If you guys go into CDX in that learning module, there's a good image right there that has this broken down for you guys. I know this looks really intimidating and really confusing, but if you just break it down a little bit, it's not that bad. All right, it's just scary to look at it first. So adding more branches provides more pathways for the current to flow, which decreases the total resistance. So if you've got a bunch of resistance in the circuit and you add different branches for it to go down, it's obviously gonna drop the resistance, all right? Total parallel resistance, circuit resistance is always less than the branch with the lowest resistance. So here's an example how to calculate that. So if you have two resistors in a parallel circuit, you wanna find total resistance. You take your resistance one, multiply it by your resistance two, divide that by resistor one plus resistor two, all right? If you have more than two resistors, here's your formula for that, to find total resistance, you take one over resistance one, one over resistance two, one over resistance three, add those all up and divide that, all right? So here's an example. If R1 is two ohms and R2 is four ohms and R3 is six ohms, so right here, for a two resistor in parallel, you wanna find resistance total. Resistance one is two ohms. Resistance two is saying four ohms, so you multiply those together up here. You divide that by your total down here, two ohms plus four ohms. Now you've made your formula look like this. You've got eight ohms divided by six ohms. Now you can find your total resistance is 1.33 ohms. Same over here, if you have um, more than two resistors in a circuit. To find resistance total, you do your resistance one, which is two ohms. Your resistance two is four ohms. Your resistance three is six ohms, it says up here. So you set your formula up like this. This is what it's gonna look like when it comes out. So now you have one divided by the total of all of this, of all your resistances down here. So it's one, divided by 0.91 ohms, and here's your resistance total. All right, once again, it's just practice. Just to practice that, just make up some of your own random numbers. Use these formulas to put it in and break it down. All right, just to practice it a little bit more. Series parallel circuits, you'll see those in cars a lot too. Um, a lot of times you'll see them in an instrument panel cluster with dash lights. Um, and that's what it says down here actually. This is kind of what it would look like in dash lights in a car. It's made of both a series and parallel circuit combined. The series portion may be before or after the parallel portion. It may be analyzed by applying series laws to the series portion of the parallel and parallel laws to the parallel portion. All right. So you can see here, you kind of have a series circuit but you also have a parallel circuit because there's different branches that go to here and back down. But you also have a series circuit. All right. So hopefully that helped you guys a little bit understand that parallel circuits are even trickier to understand than series circuits. So take a look at this stuff, go back in your learning objective, watch the videos, look at the examples, make up some fake calculations of your own, to try and figure that out because believe me, like I said, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're not gonna figure out, you're not gonna be doing these calculations every day as a technician. But what it does is it helps you understand a little bit more of if I have resistance going up, what's gonna to happen to current, what's going to happen to voltage, okay? Hope this helps. All right, keep up the good work. All right, Wartman out. <laughs>